Well, hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, we're back again today. We're still pressing on here on this channel. And uh, I've got a new story I want to share with you today. And uh, then the Lord has uh, put a message on my heart that I would like to share with you. It's from the book of Revelation, chapter 11. My wife, Judy, and I continue to pray for all of you and Thank you for sharing your prayer request with us. And uh, we pray for all of you, all of our viewers and subscribers, and we pray for all our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, we just pray and pray and pray that God will bless you and answer your prayers. We're praying with you and we're praying for you. And thank you for praying for my wife, Judy, and me. We truly do need your prayers. We ask you to pray for our health and strength. We ask you to Please pray uh, for our outreach ministry uh, that we can carry on and keep on uh, reaching out. And uh, thank you for so much for your prayers. So thank you for praying with us. Uh, born again Christians who love the Lord Jesus are calling on Anthony Fauci to resign his position as the White House chief medical advisor after Fauci was heard cursing and blaspheming the name Jesus Christ on a hot mic, a live microphone. Uh, during Fauci's testimony before the U.S. Senate Health Committee on Tuesday, uh, January the 11th, uh, Senator Roger Marshall questioned Fauci about disclosing more of his personal finances to Congress. Uh, listening to Fauci's comments caught on the microphone, Fauci could be heard muttering, what a moron, and then blaspheming out loud with the words, Jesus Christ. Senator Marshall issued a statement uh, later responding to Fauci's comments that were caught on the microphone quoting from the senator's statement uh, this is what the senator said in response Anthony Fauci had a bombshell report show he in fact did award US tax dollars for research to the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China and now he is being called out about his personal financial disclosure during the COVID pandemic not being publicly available. Uh, as many of you know, uh, I recently posted a video uh, showing how U.S. government officials who make the policies during this pandemic, who have made pandemic policies, uh, they have profited enormously from those pandemic policies that they have made. Uh, you can watch that video on Vimeo and I will post a link below this video so that you can go right to Vimeo. You can watch videos on Vimeo for free just like uh, on YouTube, just like on Odyssey. Uh, we're, we are on YouTube, we're on Odyssey and we're on Vimeo. This particular video is on Vimeo uh, because as I've shared before, we have been having trouble uh, exercising free speech on YouTube. And so this particular video is on Vimeo. And if you would like to see it, it talks about how high government officials are making a big profit. They're making big money out of the very policies that they are making uh, during this pandemic. Uh, so this senator is questioning Anthony Fauci about his finances. Uh, he's the White House chief medical advisor. Most of you know who Anthony Fauci is. Uh, he's asking him about his money deals uh, and uh, that are related to the pandemic. And in response, Fauci gets defensive and he calls the senator a moron and he curses using the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, so now today, the news media is telling the story about the senator being called a moron, but uh, I'm noticing that they are ignoring the real story here. 
Uh, now, let me say this. I do believe that it does matter uh, that people are calling each other morons. Don't misunderstand me. Uh, I, that is a story. And uh, in fact, I've been saying on this channel for years, those of you that have been following this channel, you know, I've been saying for years, uh, why can't we uh, disagree with one another without uh, calling each other names, without hating each other? Why can't we disagree with each other with kindness and civility toward each other? Uh, for for years now, I've been getting comments from people that disagree with me and uh, and they express hatred toward me. They call me all kinds of names. And uh, I mean, they just disagree with me. And uh, for the most part, what I do is I delete those comments or I, I block those emails that come to me like that. Uh, they're dis they're disagreeing with me, but they can't do it s with civility. And and brothers and sisters, all I can say is that's not the way it should be. I mean, if you call yourself a born again Christian, as so many people do, that express these feelings and this hatred and these and this name calling, so many people that call themselves Christians do this. This is so wrong. And uh, I've been talking about this on this channel for years. Uh, when we disagree with each other, let's just speak to each other in love. Let's not, don't attribute uh, to the other person that the other person is a demon or a moron or an idiot uh, just because you disagree with that person. And uh, so that is, that is a story. That is wrong uh, for uh, anyone to be calling somebody a moron simply because they disagree. But the real story here, the big story, is uh, that a public official here on a live microphone is using the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, as a curse word. We know the name of Jesus Christ is going to be denigrated. We know the name of Jesus Christ is going to be uh, despised and talked about and put down and we know that's that's the way it is it's been that way for years but it's going to get a lot worse in these last days we know that but nevertheless uh, we would say that it's uh, it's not okay and uh, we we will say uh, to uh, Anthony Fauci yes we would like to see you resign we don't think that you ought to be a public official representing us uh, or representing anybody, or representing uh, anyone in this world uh, as some kind of a health official, uh, and you are publicly uh, curse using uh, the name of Jesus Christ as a curse word. Uh, no, we don't respect you, and we don't respect what you're doing, and that is a big deal to us. That is a big story to us. Uh, now, the message that God has laid on my heart is talking about uh, where in these last days uh, there will be people speaking up for the Lord and there will be people that hate them and want to despise them and kill them. And uh, that comes from uh, Revelation chapter 11. The Lord has given me this message to share today and I would call this message uh, the mission of the two witnesses and the method of the two witnesses. The mission and the method of the two witnesses. Uh, verse uh, 1 of chapter 11, uh, the Bible says, And there was given me a reed like a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. So here we see the Apostle John, uh, who is receiving the revelation of Jesus Christ, is receiving this revelation and uh, we've come now to uh, here in chapter 11 and verse 1 the apostle john is handed a measuring stick and uh, the angel speaking to john tells him i want you to take this measuring stick and go measure the temple of god measure the altar and measure the worshipers therein now that may sound strange, you know, how is John supposed to do that? But uh, this is what the angel says to John. Uh, and then the angel says, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given to the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 
40 and 2 months. So John is told, take your measuring stick and measure the temple of God and the altar and the worshipers there, but do not measure the outer court. For the outer court has been given to the Gentiles to trample over the city of Jerusalem and to occupy the city for 42 months. Now this 42 months is talked about a lot in the Bible. And we're talking here about the, the 42 months that begins when the Antichrist violates the peace covenant. He breaks this peace covenant that, that has been made, uh, made with Israel and many nations, talked about in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. The Antichrist, who is called in Re book of Revelation, the beast out of the sea, Uh, he has been out conquering nations around the world leading up to this point in time. He's leading up to this, the beginning of the 42 months. We're talking about a 42 month time span here. And during this 42 months, when the Gentiles will trample on the city of Jerusalem, and when they will trample there on the in the outer temple courts we understand that this is the same 42 months when the antichrist the bible says will be ruling the entire world he has been before this 42 months begins he has been out conquering and uh using uh the mighty military which we are convinced is the united states military we believe that this antichrist is none other than trump Donald Trump, who will return to power in 2025, being re-elected president. We believe he'll be inaugurated in 2025. And uh, soon after, uh, we're going to be seeing uh, the second seal opened in, from Revelation chapter 6 and devastating war uh, coming out upon the earth. And, uh, and then he will, by that time, be confirming the covenant with Israel and the covenant that is confirmed with Israel and many nations he will break that midpoint the Bible says and when he does that that begins the final 42 month period which is also the 42 month time of tribulation the tribulation of the saints now I have talked about these things in my past videos and I just urge you to go to my website and you can go from my website you can look at the videos that we have featured on our website and there you will find uh, more information about these things where I talk about these subjects uh, talking about the tribulation of the saints talking about the final days talking about the uh, final 42 months, talking about so many of these things, uh, you can go to our website and uh, link to our videos uh, to hear more about in detail these things that I'm talking about here. This 42 months is when Jerusalem is trampled by the Gentiles. It's a time when the wrath of God is being poured out on a rebel world. It's a time when the persecution of the saints intensifies, the tribulation of the saints. And the Antichrist is, at, by this time, is making war on true born-again Christians. And many Christians are being killed. And many others, the Bible says, are surviving. And many will survive until the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, at the end of these 42 months, the Antichrist, the beast, the Bible says, will gather the world's armies at Armageddon and will try to utterly crush and rob the people of Israel. But until then, the Gentiles will simply be abusing the city. Uh, they will, uh, at Armageddon, the armies of the Antichrist Gog will try to annihilate Israel. But... Uh, up until Armageddon, during this final 42 months, uh, the Gentiles will simply be trampling on the city and abusing the city. 
And then verse 3 uh, here in the chapter 11, And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So thus uh, says the Lord that he is going to give power to his two witnesses. And these two men, they are prophets, and they will prophesy for these 42 months. Uh, this is 1260 days, 42 months, uh, and they are clothed in sackcloth. These are two individual people, two individual men of God wearing sackcloth. And uh, they will prophesy clothed in sackcloth, which is a sign of humility, a sign of repentance, a sign of contrition before God, as they are calling others to repent and humble themselves and be contrite before Almighty God. These are the two olive trees. Reading from verse 4 now. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. The two olive trees. Now, what are olive trees? What's, what is the thing about olive trees? Well, of course, they, olive trees produce olives. Uh, what's the use of olives? The fruit of the olive tree, of course, is a very healthy food. Uh, people eat olives, and they're very, very good for you. Uh, and when pressed... Uh, when the olives are pressed in a press, olive oil is produced. Uh, you can squeeze it out of those olives. It's a very healthy oil to be used in cooking or to be used in food preparation. Uh, olive oil is also used in medications all around the world. It's very good uh, to be used uh, as a skin moisturizer. But the main thing, the most traditional and, and main use of uh, olive oil is for burning uh, in the uh, oil lamps. Uh, it has been used in the Middle East for centuries. It's used still today in many places of the world. Uh, and so the point that, that this is making in calling these two witnesses the two olive trees is pointing out that they are sources of light. The olive tree is a source of light. It's a source of olive oil, and olive oil is good for burning in oil lamps, in traditional lamps, uh, to give light. And so that is the meaning of this. These, are source, these two witnesses are sources of light. They're bringing light. They're bringing God's light to a lost world. Uh, and they're also called the two candlesticks, which is the same, the same picture, the same, uh, the same analogy here. Two candlesticks standing before God. They bring light uh, to the people. They are bearers of the true light, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, the gospel, the good news that comes to a lost world, uh, that people are bringing to a lost world. The Bible says that... Uh, this gospel shall go to all the world, and then the end shall come. So even in these last 42 months, uh, the two witnesses are bringing the gospel to a lost world. The, the people uh, of the world that are born-again Christians and love the Lord, that are surviving this time of tribulation of the saints, uh, the ones that are surviving are telling people about Jesus, trying to win people to Christ. And if any man will hurt them, talking about these two witnesses, now reading from verse 5, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So God is saying here, now look, here's a warning. Uh, God is giving them a supernatural protection from anyone who would try to hurt them. These two witnesses will be despised by the lost people who populate the earth. And God will give these two witnesses his protection from their enemies who hate them. A fire will come out of their mouths and devour their enemies who would try to do them harm. Now, you may say, well, how, how is that? Well, if we look at Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 14, 
we see where it says that God told the prophet Jeremiah that he would make his words in Jeremiah's mouth to be fire and the people to be wood that the fire would devour. So in other words, it may be here uh, that the two witnesses will uh, simply rebuke anyone trying to hurt them. Uh, the Lord rebuke you. Uh, and uh, whereupon when they say that, that person will suddenly die. Maybe a literal fire will come out of their mouth. Or maybe they will just say, the Lord rebuke you. And that fire will devour their enemy that would do them harm. But however it's accomplished... The Lord will preserve the lives of these two witnesses. He will preserve their lives. And that will fulfill the prophecy of his being their witnesses for 42 months. Uh, if without this protection, uh, they would be killed long before the 42 months were ended. Uh, but because of this uh, supernatural protection from God, they will be kept safe until the time that they have finished their testimony. Uh, now, verse 6, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And so these two men will pray for the Lord to stop the rain and the land will dry up during the 42 months. They will pray for the Lord to turn certain rivers and streams into blood. And they will pray for the Lord to smite the earth with all kinds of plagues whenever the two witnesses choose, as often as they will. Now let's take a look at this verse. These two witnesses are praying, and God is answering their prayers. And these are very specific and pointed prayers to smite the earth with these plagues, with many plagues, the Bible, the Bible says. And what is their purpose? What is their purpose here, folks? What is God's purpose in allowing these plagues to smite the earth? Is it because God enjoys this sort of thing? Does God just enjoy sending plagues? No, that's not the intent. That's not God's pleasure or God's intent. Uh, what is the intent? Uh, do these uh, two witnesses enjoy this? Are they enjoying smiting the earth? These two men are two witnesses. That is their purpose. Their mission is to witness, to be a light, to be that olive, uh, burning olive oil, those, that burning, those burning candlesticks, to bring light to a lost world. That is their purpose telling the lost world that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And they're telling the world this, and the world is ignoring them. The world is, is just discounting this crucial, life-saving message that would save souls. The world is ignoring this, this gospel of Jesus Christ. And so how can the two witnesses command the attention of this rebellious world and get their attention and wake them up so that some might be saved? The Bible says the children of God will do exploits at this time. And no doubt there will be many miracles being done by the people of God. Uh, healings, casting out demons. This is God's doing, God's work working through his people, answering the prayers of his people. And he will do this through the two witnesses. The blind will see, the deaf will hear. Uh, but even through all of that, even through all of these miracles and exploits, most people of the earth will continue to ignore the gospel. They will continue to ignore the preaching of God's witnesses all over the world and and even of these two men and so the Lord is going to answer the prayers of these two witnesses when they pray for plagues to smite the earth because plagues these plagues will command the attention of the rebel world the rebellious world will 
sit up and notice these plagues and they will notice that okay if God if there is a God in heaven sending these plagues on us there will be a chosen few who will respond and say I'm believing this message coming from these two witnesses I'm believing that if they can send this plague if God Almighty sends this plague in answer to their prayers then I need to listen to what these two men are saying and there will be a chosen few who will listen uh, there will be no ignoring these plagues no rainfall bringing drought and famine and trouble this is going to bring some people to repentance and faith in the message that is being preached by these two witnesses rivers and streams turning to blood and God only knows what other kinds of plagues we're talking about but the purpose of these plagues is simply this to wake up a lost world to shake up a defiant world that has been ignoring the message the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the purpose that is why it's done this is God's way of waking people up out of their slumber out of their sleep shaking up their world with trouble and disaster and plagues just like this pestilence that is plaguing the world today God has sent these troubles into this world to wake up a lost world and to call them come to me and I will save you call upon the name of the Lord you will receive help from God if you turn to the Lord the Lord Jesus said there would be earthquakes and famines and pestilences and signs and wonders from heaven blessings in disguise because it will wake up some people these are wake-up calls a means of saving some lost souls before it's too late this is the purpose of these plagues sent by the Lord that will be answers to the prayers of these two witnesses to shake up and wake up a chosen few uh, we've talked about this on this channel uh, I refer you to my videos and encourage you to please watch them uh, because brothers and sisters I believe with all my heart uh, God is talking to his people today and giving us the message uh, to be his witnesses to this lost world and tell people about Jesus tell them why these things are happening today tell people why this pandemic is happening today and what the answer to this is and then verse 7 and when they have finished their testimony the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and so at the end of the 1260 days at the end of the 42 months that we're talking about the beast out of the bottomless pit will make war on them and will kill them this is the beast out of the sea out of the abyss uh, out of the bottomless pit the beast known also as the Antichrist the man of sin the son of perdition that's who this is uh, that will kill these two witnesses and uh, shortly after these two witnesses die uh, it won't be long uh, in, in, in a, just a matter of time it will be that uh, the Antichrist will call the armies of the world together to Armageddon and uh, that will be the time of the second coming of our Lord Jesus now verse 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified and so their dead bodies of these two witnesses shall lie in the street of Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified the city is likened here to Sodom and Egypt which spiritually are reckoned as unholy places from which God called his people 
to come out. God brought Lot and his family. He called them to come out and he brought them out of Sodom before judgment fell upon that wicked city. God called Israel to come out of Egypt even as uh, God was sending judgments and plagues upon that rebellious country. So in this same chapter of the book of Revelation, the, the Lord calls Jerusalem uh, a great city which is spiritually like Sodom and Egypt, but he also calls it the holy city. In verse 2 of this same chapter, chapter 11, uh, he calls Jerusalem the holy city. But here uh, he's calling it in verse 8, Sodom and Egypt. Uh, Jerusalem is that city that is called to be holy. Uh, it's called to be a place of godliness. Uh, but it is in fact a city of ungodliness. And so it's called to be a shining city answering to God. But in fact, it is a wicked city that is rebelling against God. And so now in verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So all the people around the world are looking upon the dead bodies of these two witnesses. Of course, that's via media, uh, through news, through the television, through the internet, uh, through media. Uh, all people all over the world are gazing upon uh, the uh, dead bodies of these two witnesses. And, uh, and uh, no one will allow anyone to bury the bodies uh, while they're gloating over these bodies. Verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. So lost souls uh, will be jubilating all over the world. Uh, they'll be jubilating over the death of these two witnesses who had called people to repent, who had called people to be saved from hell through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, people everywhere will be rejoicing and exchanging gifts for three and a half days because they so despised these two men who had been pronouncing that God would save lost souls that would repent and believe in Jesus Christ. They had done everything possible in their lifetime to try to wake up and call a lost world to Christ. And now they've been martyred and everyone is celebrating and, and uh, jubilating over their death. Verse 11, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So after the three and a half days, God will raise them to life and all the world will behold the miracle of their resurrection rising up into uh, to heaven. And uh, there again, through the use of media, through television, the internet, and, uh, and uh, this will be, uh, there will be many cameras pointed at this event and uh, it will be broadcast all over the world. People will see these two witnesses get back up on their feet after being dead for three and a half days. They will see them get back up on their feet. Verse 12 now, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So just imagine what that will mean uh, to so many people. Uh, a great voice from heaven will be heard calling the two witnesses to come up into heaven. Uh, and all those who despise these two men will see them ascend up to heaven in a cloud. And then verse 13, and this verse concludes our, our Bible study here uh, on, these, on this event about the two witnesses, which I wanted to share with you today. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. That is the conclusion of uh, this study here. Think of that. 
brothers and sisters, that this is the result of, this is quite, a, quite an event. Uh, these two witnesses have risen up into heaven. There's this massive earthquake in the city of Jerusalem. A tenth part of the city uh, falls. 7,000 people are killed in the earthquake. And those that remain are frightened. The fear of God is uh, given to them at that moment. And they give glory to the God of heaven. Uh, the chosen few will be saved. And all of these things that are happening are happening for that purpose. That is the purpose. That is the reason. That is the goal. That is why the plagues. That is why the two witnesses. That is why uh, all these things are happening. As I say, the Bible says, Jesus told us that the gospel will go to all the world and then the end will come. This is our purpose in these last days. Tell people about Jesus until the very end. To, until the very end. These two witnesses kept working to the very end. And uh, their life was a witness for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so within the hour, a great earthquake has shaken Jerusalem. One-tenth of the city has collapsed. 7,000 people are dead. The chosen few in the city who have the eyes to see will fear God and will turn to him with their whole heart. They will receive God's truth and they will give glory to God. This is the intended result of the shaking that God sends upon a rebellious world. This is God's purpose in sending this earthquake, in sending famine, disaster, hurricane, tornado, the pestilence, pandemic, plagues, attention getters. That's what these things are. God's purpose is that the chosen few will wake up and respond to God's call to repent and be saved, to trust in the true gospel of Jesus Christ, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and be saved and live forever with God in the new Jerusalem. That is God's purpose. Glory and honor to God our Savior.